So the last step of bringing our cluster online is to configure our cluster role. Now, I'm going to be able to take you through part of this, but not through the whole thing because I don't have uh, everything set up to be able to do a full cluster, which is going to require multiple clusters and shared cluster storage and all of those things. And I don't have that available at the moment. So I'm just going to walk you through the preliminary steps of how you would configure a role for your cluster and look at some of the options available for it. And then we'll try to configure one. We'll come to a point where we're going to hit a standstill. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to come back later and build up some more resources and be able to actually take you through the entire process. So um, let's start by looking at our roles. And so here in our configure, we've got a configure role option. We've got the same thing here where this will show us our roles that are available or the, our roles that are configured. And then we can right click and configure role. Okay, once we start configuring the role, it'll tell us a little bit about it. You know, it configures a high availability role. Uh, if a clustered server fails, we'll run in the role, another one will pick it up. Okay, we know that. That's why we're doing this. All right, select role. And we have several roles here that we can use. Now, several of these are specific to Microsoft. So we've got the DFS namespace server, or a DHCP server, or a file server, or a Hyper-V replica broker, or an iSCSI target server. And you'll notice on several of these, let me do um, a virtual machine server, several of these it's saying, hey, I can't do this because it's gonna require a role or a feature. So like for the virtual machine, if we're gonna use a cluster to make a virtual machine highly available, then our cluster nodes have to have Hyper-V pre-installed on them. So we configure the Hyper-V role and then we can add that to the cluster and have that um, cluster role activated on the cluster. So, and for each one of these, it's gonna walk you through a different set of, um, a different set of configuration options. Now you're also gonna notice we have some generic things. Generic application, generic script, generic service. Uh, other server. Now these are for things that are not a Microsoft specific role. Uh, so it might be a database server or a messaging server or something like that. Now for those you're going to need to um, you're going to need to go through the documentation of a specific application and follow its instructions for how to cluster that specific application. But in your uh, role configuration here are some of the tools that you'll use to do that. Now, we're going to do a file server. Now, um, first thing that jumps out to us is, all right, how are we going to do a fi clustered file server? Because, you know, if a node goes down, doesn't it u lose all of the files that were on that? And the answer is yes. So with the file server, what happens is we have that file server role clustered, but the uh, files are actually staved on some type of cluster shared storage or something that's accessible to every one of the nodes in the cluster. So even if your file server goes down, the files are still stored somewhere else. Another file server will be able to pick it up and redirect to that cluster shared storage. So we're gonna click next and we're gonna walk through this one now. Couple of different types, file server for general use, scale out file server, and in the description, it will give you the specifics of what these are for. Uh, one thing to notice, this one right here, uh, supports SMB, data deduplication, file server resource manager, DFS, file services roles, NFS, all of these things. This one just supports SMB. It doesn't support uh, all of the other you know, NFS, DFS replication, FSRM, anything like that. This one is designed, and here's the description, is designed for server applications or virtual machines that are going to be open for an extended period of time. So we're going to go with the general use. And then we're going to set a client access point. Now we've already set a cluster name and a cluster IP address. That's actually going to be used for the cluster to communicate with itself. It's not going to be used for clients to contact the role on the cluster. This is what uh, how we define what the how the client is going to access the role on the cluster. So we're going to give it a new name, and I'm going to call it data, and we're going to give it a new IP address. So we're going to say, whoops, 27, not 277. So we're going to have every node is going to have a name and an IP address. The cluster is going to have a name and another virtual IP address. And then the role is going to have yet another name and another virtual IP address. And this one, so 
clients are going to access this clustered file server by going to data.yourname or the IP address you uh, specified here. Now, this next step is where we're going to crash and burn because we need to select the storage. So it's got to be storage that's assigned to that cluster role. And I don't have any of that available. It would need to be stored on another server, and I'm only working with a single server here. So um, if I could store that on another server, that would be awesome. Then we could go all the way through this process. And we do cluster shared storage. Um, and then that storage would be available, and we'd select it here and then conf uh, continue on through the wizard. But that's where you'll go and some of your options available for setting cluster roles. Now, you've got to have everything in place first. So your cluster has to be validated. Your roles have to be installed on all of the node servers that are going to be part of your cluster. You have to have your cluster shared storage. And once you get, uh, you have to configure your quorum settings, make sure that's what you want. And once you get all of that done, then you can do this and you can configure your cluster role. Okay. So that's our real quick introduction to clustering. And I'm hoping to be able to come back uh, one of these days and do something a little more complete and thorough when I've got some additional resources available. But hopefully this will give you an idea of how we can go through and configure clustering on Windows Server.